thank you uh, professor martin uh, can you see my slides yes yes thank you so uh, as professor martin has said management of third nerve palsy can be quite a challenge uh, as uh, four of the six muscles uh, moving the eye are affected and we do have rather little to go by so we'll try and see uh, what are the options currently available for the management of a patient of third nerve palsy so the uh, basic options we would have are a maximal or a supramaximal recess resect procedure of the horizontal recti, which could be done on the same or in the other eye. We can do a lateral rectus periosteal fixation to remove all the action of the lateral rectus and do a large medial rectus resection. We can do a, a globe anchor to the medial orbital wall along with a large lateral rectus recession, or we could do a medial transposition of the lateral rectus. So we'll just see... Uh, now that all these options are there, where we could use each one of them. So in a case where uh, there is an incomplete third nerve palsy or there is some good function of the medial rectus, we could think in terms of going for a recess resect procedure. So uh, in this case, you can see that there is a good medial rectus function. The eye is crossing the midline. We went ahead to do an ipsilateral supramaximal recess resect procedure. So a supramaximal meaning more than what we would have normally done in a comitant squint. So we have a pre-existing incompetence and we try and correct that by doing a supramaximal recess resect procedure. Sometimes we have the benefit of an aberrant regeneration. So uh, with good medial rectus function. So in this case, you can see that there is significant ptosis, but uh, the on attempted adduction, you can see the lid retracts because of some misdirected fibers, post-traumatic third nerve palsy. So this is something we could make use of if the patient is willing. So instead of operating the same eye for a supramaximal recessed resect procedure, we can operate the contralateral eye. So we operated the other eye with, again, a very large recessed resect procedure. And you can see that along with the uh, correction of the deviation, you get an improvement in the ptosis. So if there is aberrant regeneration and if the patient is willing, because sometimes they are not willing to operate the what they call the better eye. So you could think in terms of correcting the ptosis because in a patient of third nerve palsy, especially if the elevation function is affected, you may have a challenge in correcting the ptosis later on. Now, if you have a virtually complete third nerve palsy with very poor medial rectus function, that is the uh, eye is uh, not able to even cross the midline, you may want to recess or remove the function of the lateral rectus completely. And that option is available that you can uh, anchor to the periosteum of the large of the lateral orbital wall instead of a large lateral rectus recession, which can be a challenge and a risk for perforation. So, uh, you completely remove the action of the lateral rectus. And along with that, you can do a medial rectus resection. Again, it is usually supramaximal and hope to get alignment. So this was a case you can see there is some function of the medial rectus. The eye is uh, adducting uh, to a certain extent, although still does not cross the midline. In this case, we did the lateral rectus periosteal fixation with a large medial rectus resection. You are able to get a fair amount of alignment in the primary gaze. However, if there is no function of the medial rectus, so you can see the deviation in primary gaze and attempted adduction, there is hardly any movement. So in such a case, we did attempt the lateral rectus periosteal fixation with a large medial rectus resection. Unfortunately, the outcomes were suboptimal. You can see that because there is virtually no action in the medial rectus, even here you can see no improvement in adduction, the outcomes would remain poor. So what are the options in cases of a complete oculomotor nerve palsy or a complete medial rectus palsy? So you have globe fixation procedures to the medial orbital wall uh, where you can have various approaches, including the DCR approach, the precaruncular approach we prefer, or the retro or the transcurricular approach uh, uh, popularized uh, by uh, Mofields. You can use fascia lata, you can use the, use the orbital periosteal flaps. And the other option is transposition of the lateral rectus to the medial, uh, to the medial side or adjacent to the medial rectus. So again, uh, this is the precruncular approach we use. We prefer this because this gives us a very straight entry to the periosteal wall and we can easily pass uh, uh, non-absorbable sutures and tie them here. So 
This is the pre-caruncular approach, and we found this to be very, very effective in correcting even very large deviations. So in this case, you can see that it's a very large deviation, a complete uh, third nerve palsy with virtually no medial rectus function. And by doing a large lateral rectus recession to free the forced action test and doing a medial orbital wall uh, periosteal fixation, you can see that the alignment is very good, although, of course, you do not get significant uh, adduction or abduction. So that is a, a downside of this procedure. And if there is preoperative significant abduction or adduction, then you may think of alternate procedures. The, uh, the newer procedure, uh, which now of course has been significantly, uh, is very popular and has been done by a lot of surgeons is the uh, transposition of the lateral rectus to the medial side. And this was originally uh, described by Taylor and Kaufman and uh, Gokigit was the one who uh, reintroduced it. And uh, there were uh, limitations to this. The most important was that transposing it medially still gave suboptimal results. So while uh, Jaspreet from India actually uh, did a medial rectus resection along with it, we modified the transposition procedure and added a posterior fixation suture to the transposed uh, two slips of the medial rectus, uh, of the lateral rectus superior and inferiorly so that you have a much larger transfer of the post vector. And these are uh, some of the cases you can see that uh, significant deviation which gets corrected postoperatively. Another patient you can see again, good postoperative alignment. If you have a vertical deviation along with a large horizontal deviation, the split lateral rectus transposition to the medial rectus will not correct for the vertical deviation. So we tried a full tendon transposition from the side opposite to the direction of deviation. So in this case, there was a exo with a hypertropia and we shifted the entire lateral rectus to the inferior root to the medial side. So you can see it significantly corrects the vertical deviation along with the horizontal correction, although the horizontal correction we felt was suboptimal, not as great as what you would see in the split transposition procedure. Another patient, you can see there was significant hypotropia along with the exotropia. And in this, we did the transposition from the superior root that is underneath, transferred the lateral rectus underneath the superior rectus and the superior oblique, oblique medially to get, again, a good vertical correction and fairly good uh, adduction or fairly good primary gaze alignment. The only downside of a transposition procedure was that it was uh, a rather a fixed procedure, especially if you are planning an augmentation of the uh, transposition. So we tried to enhance the transposition by crossing it underneath and uh, making it adjustable. So this was the procedure. So the uh, lateral, rec la lateral rectus is split, transferred from underneath the superior oblique su uh, superior rectus and the inferior slip underneath the inferior oblique inferior rectus medially. And then it is crossed underneath the medial rectus so that the inferior slip is inserted superior to the medial rectus and the superior slip inserted underneath, uh, inferior to the medial rectus on uh, sutures that are adjustable. So we used the short tag nose technique to uh, make this process adjustable. And most of the time, just by adjusting it intraoperatively, we are able to get very good post-operative alignment. So another patient, you can see the uh, pre-operative and the post-operative correction. Again, you can even adjust the vertical deviation by loosening or tightening the side of sutures you want to correct for the vertical. So again, in this case, you can see there was significant hypotropia also along with the exotropia. And uh, by adjusting it intraoperatively, we were able to get good post-op correction. So to summarize, now we have a lot of options for management of third nerve palsy. We need to see whether it's complete or incomplete and assess the function of the medial rectus. We uh, need to look for any aberrant regeneration, which would help us uh, in management, especially for the ptosis. Uh, you need to see if the patient, of course, is willing for other eye surgery and finally choose appropriate surgery depending upon the function of the medial rectus you have. I prefer the lateral rectus split transposition medially when there are vertical deviations, which I can correct in the same procedure. And I prefer the medial periosteal anchor if the forced action test is positive, that is the lateral rectus is tight or in cases for resurgery. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.